want to mention my name is Lak Faitas and I'm a senior. And I would like to share uh, maybe some brief information about .NET on IoT because it's a really uh, big area. And we just uh, mentioned a few words. And if you want, uh, in the end, I will share some links where you can read more deeply about this area. So before I uh, started, I would like to say that if you have some maybe questions or you want to share some experience or opinion on different topics that I mentioned, uh, please feel free to interrupt and say it. So uh, what will we start? It? So uh, we'll start from brief overview, what is it IoT. Uh, then we will move to how to develop using .NET this. Uh, uh, how to develop uh, some application for microcontrollers. We will touch different uh, frameworks that are already present. Uh, also, we will focus it on developing uh, .NET application for uh, Raspberry Pi. That is maybe the most popular uh, board uh, for developing some uh, smart things. Then, uh, if you want to be about Midov, uh, and about different protocols for connect different devices uh, using uh, .NET. And in the end, we will uh, touch some few words about Azure IoT Hub and our conclusion. So uh, uh, let's start from the IoT. So what this means, IoT is Internet of Things, and it's uh, uh, some network with physical devices or object uh, that is a things names. And it uh, provides some embedded system with sensors with different uh, uh, devices that are connected uh, uh, with uh, themselves or another device and to provide different information and uh, share this information uh, with us. So it helps a lot of different things. And we discuss in the next slide what it means. But as you can see, uh, for this infographics, uh, there are a lot of uh, the such devices are development and produce it. And uh, year from years, it will be more and more uh, uh, near the us. And as you can see, the most popular is uh, devices using 5G and uh, wireless networks. So it gives us a lot of possibility to have a different devices, uh, not near the us or near some uh, uh, devices in some places where we uh, have a good network. It can be in some places where you can just have GSM network. And it provides a lot of uh, such possibilities. So, and as you can see, the populate will be taken to 5G. So it provides uh, great benefits. So it has uh, low latency. It uh, provides uh, more traffic capacity, experience throughput, spectrum effective, and network efficiency. So it's a great opportunity to develop such things and monitor different, uh, I don't know, places, uh, devices, what you need to get this information. Or maybe you want to monitor your uh, home where, when you are on vacation. So what it can be? Uh, uh, when we first say about IoT, everybody knows that the uh, most popular maybe part of this IoT is smart house. So the different uh, sensors for gas, for water, uh, open closed door, etc., temperature. So it's maybe the most basic uh, area of the IoT and uh, a lot of uh, uh, people are developed such uh, application on system based on Raspberry Pi. So as I said, we will touch this uh, board. Also different valve switchers, uh, there are a lot of smart TV, I don't know, vacuum, water machine. So it's really a lot of such devices that are near us. And another, on another hand, we have different, uh, another opportunity, it is a smart card. So uh, this card has LIDAR, uh, different camera sensors that gives us a better uh, uh, life, it's made our life more comfortable. And different, uh, another area is uh, healthcare. So maybe you know this, uh, maybe 
uh, several years ago about Tyrannus. It is Elizabeth Holmes that uh, produced some, uh, they want, uh, she wants to produce some uh, devices that can uh, provide a different uh, medical experiments and you have provided different information based on your simple uh, drop of your uh, uh, bolt. So it's, it's not, uh, uh, she's can, she uh, has not have a lot of possibilities to produce such device, but she gives uh, a lot of uh, different talks, how we can improve such uh, wave and how we can develop uh, IoT in this uh, direction. So uh, for me, uh, uh, IoT, I was made on, uh, 2010 years when I was started and the last years of uh, course uh, at the university and I want to apply to PhD program in my university and my mentor said that he, have, he had a great idea to develop some uh, devices it's named lab on chips so it's laboratory on some programmable uh, chips that can identify the quality of water so for me, it was a stranger topics, but uh, she's, he says that uh, there are a lot of uh, researchers in this area and it's a great opportunity to develop such device. So uh, my part was to develop only a program uh, uh, side of this device, but uh, you, uh, you need to know everything about this device. So, you need uh, to know how to develop, uh, what uh, framework you need to use, uh, or what board I use it on this, uh, what uh, uh, communication you will do with another devices. Does this device will have some Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or et cetera. So it's, uh, it was a great opportunity to learn this new director. And in this year, I, was st I started uh, developing using .NET, and it was uh, 2010, yes, I said, and it was a uh, .NET framework 4.0. And uh, I don't know if there are some maybe a portable device framework for such microcontrollers. As I know, my friends are programming such microcontrollers using Qt. It is a framework based on C++, but there are no other people who can share some information about how to develop uh, uh, some applications using .NET and based on some microcontrollers. But uh, for my, uh, uh, for me, for my, uh, it was a great uh, framework. It was uh, .NET micro framework developed. So initial release was uh, 2007 and it provides some CLRR uh, uh, a prototype to developing some framework, some uh, application using .NET for microcontrollers. And in 2010s, it was already presented some open source hardware fast domino. So this uh, hardware produced everything that I need. Some, so it's provide uh, Bluetooth controllers, they provide uh, LCD monitor, to show some information that we need to detect. And also it uh, provides some uh, great uh, opportunities. Yes, so it support RM processor uh, seven and eight and Cortex in 2012. But in other side, it's uh, not so great to have such device because you have a, a limited uh, capacity, I mean, it's about flash and RAM. So you have only 62 kilobytes uh, on your RAM and uh, more than 100 kilobytes on flash. And you can just store some information up to two gigabytes. So you have limited possibilities to develop a great things, but uh, uh, in this time, we develop uh, applications that use it in neural net to identify different solids in our liquids. Uh, currently it's not uh, developed, uh, but in this time uh, I was happy to resolve such opportunities. 
But uh, so let's uh, look on the architecture of this framework uh, to get better understand uh, how it works. So we have application level on the tops. Uh, in this layer, we just uh, perform some, uh, run some our application and develop. Uh, one of the benefits of this .NET uh, framework, you can use WPF. So we can develop some uh, user-friendly interface to using this application. And you run this application using CLR, as I mentioned, on runtime component layer. Uh, one uh, bad side of this uh, realize that you have you need to have some <clears throat> operation system or some CLRs that are portable for these devices, and this is a tiny CLR operation system, and uh, they are using APIs that are performed on uh, PLL segment. It is uh, made. Uh, platform abstraction layer and hardware abstraction layer is a hub. So this layer, these two layers are developed using C++ and our CLR is a wrapper for these uh, two layers and you can use this uh, API using uh, the development on C++. So as I mentioned, it's not a great, uh, so it's not produce a great uh, possibility to develop uh, a rich application, but uh, it great. It gives a great start to uh, to develop uh, .NET for different uh, microcontrollers. So, if, uh, as I mentioned, to run this, uh, to run your application using uh, .NET micro framework, you need to tiny uh, CLR is operation system that uh, gives you this, such opportunities to run this. Uh, so one another bad side is, uh, so this operation system only available for CTA core family product. So you are limited on such devices. And if you still interested in what sensors and devices you can use, uh, you have this link. But we develop uh, another evolution of programming uh, microcontrollers is a .NET Nano framework. And this uh, framework is still developing and I will share some examples using this framework. So it's a free open source platform as a, as a same, with the same idea as the micro framework. In, if you want to run some application on different microcontrollers and to get a better experience uh, to have a lot of different devices, not only based on CAT core, as I mentioned before, this uh, .NET framework gives you a better opportunity. So uh, for now, it supports a lot of uh, most popular architecture, RM, Cortex, so you are not limited on uh, such devices. And uh, in 2021, published with Azure uh, IoT SDK, so you can connect your devices to Azure and communicate. So it gives a new opportunity to uh, develop uh, rich applications. Uh, so the structure architecture of this nano framework is uh, more different uh, than this micro framework because, as you can see, our nano framework is on the uh, below for a level, so it's near the hardware abstraction layer. Yeah, and there are no, uh, uh, so in this case, you do not need uh, some wrapper on C++ to run your application. You just need your uh, .NET framework on your hardware, and this framework provides you uh, a rich API to perform different things with your uh, microcontrollers. So uh, let's move from our theory to maybe practice. And I will share a few examples how to use uh, .NET uh, Nano framework. So first of all, we need uh, extensions for visual code or different version of your visual studios. And it creates some, uh, provide some template for your uh, Visual Studio, so you can use a simple 
template on Visual Studio. So let's move to my Visual Studio. And uh, let's start, sorry, let's share. Yep. So, do you see my visuals here? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Great. So maybe let's zoom. So what we need to uh, develop some application using that uh, that not a framework. Let's move to Snagit package to overview what we have installed. So as you can see, we have only three things. It is uh, .NET Framework, Core Library, Runtime Events, and System Device GPO. Uh, this System Device GPO provides you uh, API for different uh, devices, sensors that you can connect it to your microcontrollers. And let's get to the code. So we have a uh, controller's main point, uh, GPIN, GPO, so what it means it's uh, you can connect to diff if your motherboard, you can connect to different uh, devices using GPO. It provides uh, different pins, and when you connect some, I don't know, button, LED devices, or some LCD monitors, you choose some pins, and using this controller, you can connect to your pin. So, for example, we connect uh, some uh, LED. Uh, bulb. Yeah, we can connect it to five uh, to the first pins, and we perform some uh, mod. So, for example, we have general core mod, input output. It is uh, what we used. In our case, it is uh, LED, so we just output information. If we will use some pin sensors, it will be input information. And also we have another two, it is input uh, pull down and input pull up, it is using pull down resistors. So what we'll do, we connect our uh, LED to our GPO we have connected and in our uh, cycle, we just perform toggle. So we will have a switching our uh, LED bulb and then thread sleep. As you can see, it's a really simple uh, application um, with uh, no such complicated uh, things that you need to do. It's really simple. Yeah, and if we will go to, for example, to our application, we have such. Yeah, so we have a loop and with some timeout, it link our LED bulb. And I would like to show another, maybe more complicated oh, yeah. in our cases uh, application. So Sorry we for interrupting you. Uh, can you yeah. can I ask about the uh, device that you've shown on the picture? What, what device was that? It's a Raspberry Pi. That was this? Okay. A Raspberry Pi. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. So yeah, uh, I would like to mention that everything uh, examples will show it using Raspberry Pi. As I mentioned, it's really popular uh, devices in this area to develop a different things, smart uh, houses, etc. So it's provide a lot of possibilities, a lot of different sensors. So it's great opportunity to start develop maybe some smart device and using such board. Okay, so let's I choose another example. Another example, it will be that we will have uh, two things. It will be our uh, different uh, LED bulb and we have a button. So also, so what we create. As a, as a previous project, we will create GPO controller. Uh, provide some different red, green, LED, and some user button. So connect this information, this uh, elements to our GPO controller. As as I mentioned before, uh, when we connect our button, we will use pin mode, uh, pin mode input. So we will receive information from this device. 
and let will be connected as as output. Uh, yeah, so we create uh, attach our button to GPO and then create some event. So what's mean? Uh, this event means that we uh, when we will raise our button, we will uh, trigger some event, and during the event we will perform some action. So also we have some uh, loop and provide some uh, information to our red uh, let information. So height and low. So also will uh, will be uh, flashing this uh, red let uh, bulb. So when we uh, perform some action with our button, for example, I don't know, when we're rising this button, uh, we'll have some, we can change our green uh, let bulb. So we, when we will rise our button, our green uh, LED will be uh, flashing. And when we uh, perform another action, it will be not flashing. We say that just uh, turn off the, uh, this LED information. So uh, in this example, we provide communication between two devices that are connected to your board. So uh, in this case, it's also simple application. This no, some complicated task. So let's move to another thing. Yes, uh, maybe one of the important things uh, when we uh, want to develop some uh, IoT devices, have to communicate with your Wi-Fi. Yes, we also want to have a wireless connection without any cables, etc. So let's navigate to another example. So this example we provide uh, have to connect, have to get all adapters and have to connect to uh, one of them. So what we need? This is the same, so we need to get another, let's check what we have on this installed framework. So yeah, as you see, we have added new devices. It is a system device Wi-Fi to get uh, opportunity to, to connect some to some devices that provides Wi-Fi. So we have create some Wi-Fi adapter and uh, just retrieve all adapters that are available on your board and pick up the first. For our example, it's not necessary what device, what adapter we will pick up. Then we subscribe to some event. This event provides that we, if some networks will be uh, available, this event will be triggered. So what we'll do is, in the same case, we will create some loop uh, and try to scan our uh, Wi-Fi network. So on success completion, uh, we will return the list of available networks. And uh, this uh, if, uh, this method triggered event available network. So let's navigate to this event. So in this, when we retrieve all uh, networks that are available, uh, what we will create? So we will create some scan report networks. And uh, this report will contain all networks that are scanned. And we perform a loop for uh, through this list. Just uh, the back information what networks are provided. Uh, then uh, we, if we want to connect to some specific networks, yeah, we'll provide CIDs of this network. It's just a simple constant. We just provide for what specific uh, network you want to connect, and also password if it's required. So if uh, this network uh, are available, we just perform disconnect if we already connected to some another network and perform connection to specified network. Just using uh, our uh, networks that are available on our list. 
uh, automatically connection and our password if it's required. And after it, if connection status will be okay, we will write some information. In other case, we will uh, write a, a role information to our console. So it's also simple things. So uh, it's not a really complicated task. So you just need to connect to download appropriate uh, nugget package that contains uh, Wi-Fi and perform a few actions to get uh, connected with Wi-Fi. So it's really simple. Okay, so we have uh, such uh, applications and uh, what will be our next step? Our next step it will be how to deploy this information, this application to our board. So bef uh, before uh, do it, we need to uh, install the net framework firmware flash tool. Yes, this flash tool allows us to upload this application to, for example, for to Raspberry Pi or another board that you have. It's a first person. So the second thing you need to update your target name with this uh, flash. So you have a different choice how to do it. So if you connect your devices is connected via a COM port, you need to perform uh, appropriate things. Also, you can connect using GTAC. It's a simple device that connect uh, to USB. Or you can connect uh, using DFI. It's uh, using uh, your Wi-Fi. If you are connected with your device, you can uh, on your Visual Studio you can choose uh, Device Explorer. Uh, and if your device is connected, you can see this device on such windows. Uh, so after. Uh, applause completed. Uh, this uh, uh, image that we have, this firmware, uh, firmware will uh, allows you to run these applications on your board and just uh, click deploy on your application and you can see uh, how you can see result of running of your application on your board. So it's really just simple things. Okay, that is result as I said, uh, showed before. And uh, let's open a list of device. So one minute, please. So we can uh, uh, here link with a lot a list of devices that are supported uh, uh, by this framework. There are a, a lot of different informations, different con uh, controllers, uh, I don't know, device multiplexing, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, accelerometer, gyroscope, temperature, a lot of uh, devices are present and developed. And I would like to mention that this framework are still uh, under development and new devices will be extended time for time. So it's not a uh, uh, maintenance project. OK. I have a question here. Yeah. Uh, how much effort is it? Let's say I want to use some uh, kind of device which is not uh, supported. Nobody has made a support uh, nugget for it yet. Uh, how much effort is it to just uh, write my own support? And what do I need to do in this case? Okay, hmm. great questions. Uh, uh, I don't have some experience to write uh, own uh, code to support uh, not supported devices. Mm. Sorry, maybe I don't have an answer for your questions, but I think uh, there are a uh, great community for this uh, .NET framework. And you just think, uh, you just ask the questions or maybe provide if you want to have a specific, or maybe uh, there are another people who are developers who are working with such uh, 
devices and you can ask if somebody wants to implement a wrapper to use this device on your board. Sorry. May, may, may I answer this question? Yep. Uh, <clears throat> Sometimes it's very easy. For example, if we have some bootloader already existed for this platform, for this processor, so it will be easy. We, know, we need just only add additional uh, interfaces yes but if we don't support if nano frameworks don't support this uh, processor there will be really hard because you need to create native bootloader for nano framework because nano framework it's a dotnet framework yes that uh, started with your device and your code running inside of this nano framework so you will be responsible for um, create this bootloader for this type of processor and full support of this type of processor. So sometimes it's very hard. This depends on does a processor support it or not. I yeah, got it. On, uh, nice. Yeah, we'll extend answers. So uh, on the next slide, we will touch uh, uh, Raspberry Pi. It's a Pico and Zero that uh, doesn't support by .NET Nano Framework native, but I will provide you some solution how to run your uh, .NET application on this not supported device on the future slides. But I really don't know how much it takes to, to support unsupported per device. Okay, maybe there are another questions. Okay, so let's proceed. Uh, so uh, the next things that we will discuss it is uh, .NET IoT. It's another framework that based on uh, .NET Core. So as we know, the .NET Core can run on different multi-platforms, and uh, this uh, framework uh, provides you uh, different APIs to use uh, different IoT boards, such as Raspberry Pi and Humid board to support these uh, things and to develop different applications using .NET IoT. But there are uh, different things between this IoT and uh, .NET Nano framework. So as I mentioned, .NET Nano framework uh, still under development, it's not a maintenance project. So let's uh, view some different things between these two uh, frameworks. Yes. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, .NET IoT provides some powerful bots with memory and CPU, and nano frameworks on level, uh, low level microcontrollers events and low memory. So the benefits of .NET nano framework is that you do not need some powerful CPU or powerful bots, uh, boards, and it's a really low level microcontrollers and it's this uh, framework provides you more uh, better possibilities to develop uh, rich applications than .NET IoT. Uh, the, another thing uh, that uh, .NET IoT based on .NET Core, you can use uh, different things from .NET Core, different possibilities, and .NET Now framework currently using on .NET framework. Also using uh, Nugget package, uh, different devices, and there are different things. So that devices are supported by .NET Nano framework cannot, can be not supported by .NET IoT and versa versa. So, and another thing that we like to mention is that these two framework use uh, maybe the, uh, the, uh, the one, uh, namespace, but it's not correctly true. So as you can see, the IoT devices use IoT device binding and system device GPO. And as on my, let's move to my, to my uh, some examples, for example. Yes, we have system device G GPO. It looks, it looks like the same namespace, but it's not true because when you are uh, looking on the dot, uh, on the Nugget package, uh, it has a nano framework uh, 
dot system dot device GPO. If you are using uh, .NET IoT, you just use system device GPO. Let's just for showing. Yeah. So from code, you can see, uh, you do not see that this has uh, different framework using, but from Nugget package, it's a really different package. So I would like to mention that to pay attention on this uh, difference. Uh, and uh, another thing that are different. So in .NET IoT, you can deploy via CSH Arch connection. Uh, not net framework, you can deploy directly via wireless connections. Uh, what another thing? So, uh, .NET IT it can be used by file on Raspberry Pi iOS. And in the next slides, I will mention the difference between Wi Fi on IoT and .NET uh, na uh, Nano framework. And uh, from as this mentioned, .NET Nano framework use it uh, device through your code. So, what's the difference in IoT? You need to use Wi-Fi APIs that provides by operation system. In .NET Nano framework, you can use Wi-Fi through your code. You do not need some APIs. And another difference is that you can use Pfix certificate in your code. And .NET Nano framework can another things it is PAM, CRT, or DER certificate. So it's such difference. Yeah, um, one, so to use .NET IoT libraries, you just need two things. As I said, the system device GPO that supports some general input output, uh, uh, serial interface, serial ports, etc. And IoT device binding, it is a library for using some external devices, some matrix, uh, registers, etc. So, Let's do the same example that we do in .NET Nano using .NET IoT. So switch to our Visual Studio, close unneeded device. Tab of yeah. Uh, what we need, the same GPO controller and provides that we have connected to some board, uh, the same pin connection. Uh, what we need to connect. So register our LED to our board. The same thing that we have on .NET Nano. And in our loop, we just make a uh, flashing. Yeah, turn on and turn off your LED bulb with some timeout. And uh, finally, when we just uh, out uh, from the our loop, we need to close our pin. Yeah, as you can see, it's really uh, the similar as we do on the .NET uh, Nano frameworks. But uh, let's um, compare. So you can see the same result. So we can be flashing your device. So let's compare two uh, examples that do the same. Let's open the studio and let's do it in the studio. Uh, so what we can see, the similar things we need to get some instance of GPO controller, perform some connection, yes, but uh, you can see that uh, one different things of this. So when we uh, open our, when we connect our LED to the board, we have uh, output parameter. It is our GPO pin. So it's a separate instance of uh, each connected devices. In these things, there are no uh, such properties. You always need to remember for what pin you are connected to your LED device. And you can use 
so this in .NET Nano framework, you can uh, have API to each uh, uh, to each device that you are connected to board. And in .NET IoT, you need to remember, as I said, your pin and do actions using this pin. So maybe it's not so uh, easy to remember each pin. So you need to declare and remember uh, what pins, what you need to do this with these pins. And another thing is that you need to close your pin after you perform some action. Okay, <clears throat> it is simple as we uh, do with uh, .NET Nano framework. Let's move to more complicated. As we do on the .NET Nano, we connect some LED and some button and just uh, rising cover button to get the flashing on our LED. Let's do the same things on our .NET IoT framework. So yeah, uh, created instance of GPO controller, connect our pin, it will be, so as we can see, it is output. So it's, it's our LED uh, bulb. Uh, then we connect our button, input pull up. Yes, so uh, then we uh, create some loop in this loop, we check our status of our pin. So if it's not rising, if it's not rising, we just uh, flash it. Now then we just turn off these lights. And when we uh, go out through the loop, we close this pin. Uh, in this case, I would like to show that uh, it's not uh, Maybe easy on first uh, way because you need to read this information. It provides some pin value, convert, and using some uh, cycle to control. You cannot subscribe on some events of rising. Uh, what we will do on here. So we have some subscription on event. And when this event is triggered, we can do something, yeah. On IoT, we, we need to perform a cycle and monitor when we are rising our button. And the next uh, example that I would like to share with you, it is uh, related to Wi-Fi. As I mentioned on our difference between uh, .NET IoT and .NET Nano framework, that there are uh, two different things, yeah? To connect to Wi-Fi, you need to, uh, to connect to your API that provides by operation system. So you need to using operation system and for that nano framework, it's better because you do not need this operation system. You do not need APIs that the system provides. You can connect your to your device through your code. And it's really great benefits because uh, that nano framework works on low level microcontrollers level. So it provides more possibilities and more APIs to control your devices. So to connect uh, Wi-Fi using .NET IoT, you need to use UVP. Sorry. So it is a simple example that provides by Microsoft. Yes, and uh, different things. So it is a universal Windows platform. Yes, it's UVP. And if we choose some switch to the code, we see that you we are using Wi-Fi adapter. What is the Wi-Fi adapter? It is using wi Windows device Wi-Fi. So to connect uh, to device using IoT, you need to install this nugget package from your Windows IoT 10 or Raspberry Pi OS. 
Without this operation system, you cannot connect to your Wi-Fi. Or maybe there are another possibilities, but I don't found another ways to connect your Wi-Fi using .NET IoT. It's the strangest, but uh, maybe in the future release, it, it will be fixed or provide some better possibilities. Okay, uh, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, that uh, .NET uh, Nano Framework supports uh, RM devices uh, 7, 8, but it's not supported RM32 to 6 version. Yeah, but Raspberry Pi company provides uh, two great boards. It is uh, Raspberry Pi Zero and Pico. It's really a cheaper device. If I remember correct, it's five dollars for each device. So it's great opportunity to develop different uh, cheaper devices. And maybe it's answer on the question how to support uh, unsupported board. So it's uh, .NET framework have, uh, has a great uh, uh, .NET community and each developer wants to bring his knowledge and develop uh, some uh, useful things. And for our example, these things are already present. Uh, in uh, uh, previous year, in 2021, uh, one .NET developer provides portable things to run uh, our .NET framework, nano fr uh, framework on Raspberry Pi Zero. And in the last slides of the, our presentation, you will see these links, but let's, uh, let's review what they do. So uh, this guy create, let's switch to our, so he create a, uh, an interrupter binary, yes, to run .NET uh, Nano Framework application on Raspberry Pi. So if you will navigate to this GitHub link, yeah, we can see that uh, still under develop, he said that he developed this uh, framework uh, during his free time. So it's not commercial idea. And you can see that the raw.net P0 this is for our case uh, frameworks. And this framework allows us to run .NET uh, nano framework application on uh, Raspberry Pi 0. So he's also connected some device. And in this case, you can see A flashing of the LED uh, bulb. So he's provide a uh, short instruction how to do these things. And he also mentioned that you are made by your risk. Maybe something will be not working, but it's a uh, great uh, tools to run your code on Raspberry Pi Zero. Okay, so let's move. Another thing to run your uh, .NET Core is a middle. Uh, I'm not so familiar with this uh, technology or to say it's because it's a complex task. Uh, task. It provides uh, .NET uh, API with microcontrollers that provide by this, uh, by this, uh, uh, production. So it provides some uh, micro development kit. As you can see, it is uh, some board with uh, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, and it's not so red powerful. It's only 32 megabytes RAM. It uh, have some pins, GPOs, uh, etc. But it's a complex uh, solution. So we need to use a specific uh, board with specific API you can use. 
but in general, it's really specific things. In, in general, we can use uh, .NET. IoT on framework is more powerful in a board area direction. Okay, so we can create some application for some uh, boards uh, uh, and to develop some thing for this uh, devices. Another way how to connect this device. So if you want to create a great uh, network with a different uh, sensors, microcontrollers, uh, what standards or what protocols you need to do to get to, uh, to reach your idea. So uh, this is a table which shows different protocols uh, for IoT and TCP that we use for, for some web application, for some devices that I use at uh, internet or another protocol. So an application level, we have some different protocols. Yes, it's CUAP, MQTT, XMPP, uh, someone maybe knows XMPP protocols that they use them for some messaging application. Like if you remember ICQ, Jabber, etc. IMQP, different. Yes, in our standard TCP protocol, we use HTTP, TSL, it's well known for us. Transport layers uh, also similar for us, it is UDP or TCP in our standard versions. Internet law provided some. IP which is IP routing and one, it's a great opportunity because it's, uh, it's a similar things that we use and it's lower to have some wrappers to convert uh, Mac or another information from network TP layer. For this uh, table, we are interested only on application layer and we'll uh, briefly introduce how what is a CIP protocol or MQTT? Because another, it's really old things. So let's start for CIP. It's a constrained application protocol. It's maybe one of the popular protocols in uh, nowadays because it's really oriented for uh, Internet of Things. Uh, it has uh, open standards using DTLC protocols, uh, use some proxy from HTTP. Uh, supported uh, similar things that we have uh, for HTTP, REST for client-side model. Uh, we can just uh, provide some videos or some multimedia over UDP, uh, multicast, and client-side published subscription model. So in general, it's uh, all information, but what regarding to connection? So uh, if you have a lot of different uh, devices, we just need to have one seller, uh, server or a lot of servers, and each device can connect device to device and then connect to server, and also server can connect to another server. So it uh, provides more flexible uh, network. You can monitor different things, and it's great opportunity to have a uh, independent maybe servers or distributions. From another side, uh, we have a message queue in telemetry transport. It's really popular uh, protocols because uh, for this uh, protocols, you need a lot of computing power, flaky network connections, work on TCP. It's really uh, similar to our HTTP. Yes, uh, provide real-time information, some, uh, any system electrical matters can provide your status and you can connect uh, to all devices from your uh, server. So uh, in this case, we have one broker, uh, can be one server, some instance that can connect to different devices. Um, maybe you know that Xiaomi provides uh, some server with different uh, devices that are connected to this uh, router. Uh, maybe you can know our uh, 
AJAX system uh, that provides uh, the same uh, sensors for your home. And they are using similar things because they have some server and all devices are connected to the server. So let's compare the thing uh, to uh, things that MQTT and CUP. And basically on your uh, needs, you need to choose appropriate uh, protocols. So it can use a combine or just CUP or MQT. It's really uh, depends on your needs and what uh, sense of networks you will be performed. Okay, so uh, also there are some uh, already libraries for to using these protocols and uh, I will then share some uh, examples of my presentation that uh, you can just connect. So MQTT is also, you, uh, you can find uh, a lot of examples. So you need to create some factory, then create your client and connect to your client and connect all devices that are connected to your server. And there are a lot of different uh, examples uh, using CUP uh, from this uh, framework. So it's a really simple code without any complicated task. And as I said, the CUP is really similar to HTTP and it's the same things. Yes, yeah, so you can get, put, post, delete. It's really simple for uh, developers that uh, develop some web applications and the same response and request. So it, it will be similar with these things. And uh, yeah, uh, a few words I'd like to tell you about Azure IoT Hub. So Azure provides a great opportunity to connect your board to Azure and then to create some uh, triggers, devices, uh, or, or you can just uh, control your device and using the Azure. Uh, I'm not so familiar with uh, this uh, possibilities to Azure, but uh, I would like to share with you some examples, great examples with guys. It provides a great uh, examples that shows all possibilities with uh, Azure IoT. So what? They do, they connect some uh, microphone, uh, then using Azure speech uh, API to determine what uh, you are saying, uh, then trigger it some Azure function. They understand what you say, because you can turn on your lamp or turn off your lamp. Then uh, your Azure function triggered your IT hub where you connected your device and your device uh, uh, received uh, some event that you need or turn on your lamp on to off using some relay. So in general, you can just uh, use connect your lamp to relay and relay can provide you API to how to turn on to off such uh, connections. And if I will provide your link on this, on this. Uh, examples. So it's a uh, great show all steps that you need to create your uh, Azure uh, applications, have to connect your device to Azure and have to connect all these uh, things in one way. And uh, conclusion, yes. So in this uh, time, I'd like to say that uh, .NET has a great .NET community that provides a lot of possibilities to do different things uh, using IoT devices, different boards. And as we can see, 
not only supported by uh, official uh, .NET framework, but also a different uh, guys from .NET community developed a framework for unsupported devices. And it provides uh, a lot of possibilities, APIs, and uh, things to do a rich application or to create some smart house by yourself. And also you can use Windows 10 IoT core to create some, I don't know, web application on your uh, boards and control using this web API, your sensor devices, temperature, your house, etc. Then they say in your in my presentation you can find all links that I use it during preparation for this presentation. So that's all from my side. Maybe you have some questions, comments, or propose for future. Yes, hi, I have a question. Okay. Uh, because I, um, I was wondering uh, many times and uh, I was very intrigued by your presentation. Uh, what do you think uh, are true benefits of uh, using .NET on IoT, on constraint systems. I mean, a apart from being able to use C Sharp and NuGet packages, if uh, is there any point for someone not already familiar with .NET uh, to, to choose this path? Uh, I think yes, because it's not so complicated things. And uh, if you are not familiar with .NET, but you want to learn something new, uh, when you start learning .NET, it's really simple to use uh, .NET for IoT because there are no such complicated things that you need to know. You just need to have such devices. You need to install firmware to connect this device to your computer and Possibly that's all. You can just uh, write your simple code and deploy it on your board and see the result. Mm -hmm. And uh, another question uh, as a follow up uh, Are there any scenarios where uh, it would be advisable to choose .NET uh, um, and not some other platform or language? Uh, like, um, yeah, uh, instead of uh, coding in C or in assembly, this is the best uh, way. Like um, uh, what, what uh, scenarios are in your head? When it will be the best uh, way to do it? Oh, I don't know, because for me, I'm uh, really like .NET. So I have a different device. Uh, for example, in my home, I have a smart assistant, smart uh, bulb uh, switchers etc so in free time it's it's produced for different manufacturers so uh, bulb from leaf fx uh, switcher from another company i have uh, devices from xiaomi and you need to have some i would like to have some one application where i can control all my devices yes and mm -hmm. there are no such applications so for me it, uh, it was uh, it is a great opportunity, so I spent some time to uh, develop a simple application to control my uh, lamp, to control my switcher from .NET. So if you want to uh, create maybe a smart house or you can control some temperature in your house because there are uh, some temper sensors, you can connect to your heating system and control this heating system. It depends on temperature. Yeah? It's, for me, it's a great opportunity to start from smart house. Another way, as I said, I started from developing a micro lab on chip. So I'm still interested in this area. So, uh, and the uh, .NET firmware provides a lot of uh, great possibilities to increase performance of uh, my uh, applications. You can, if you are interested maybe in healthcare, it's also a great opportunity to use uh, .NET. Um, 
another way uh, it's for now it's really I don't know, popular it's a smart cars yeah each car has some sensors some lidar cameras but on this way i cannot say anything because i don't have such possibility to try it, how to use it and if it if the net will be applicable for such way but in a simple way to create simple uh, devices to i don't know to control some temperature heating uh, water if you have some heating system yeah it's great opportunity to start using that yeah on OET. okay thank you i have another question and again it's maybe a tricky one uh, so as you've shown us uh, those technologies are great because somebody who's an expert in dotnet can just go and start doing uh, iot uh, using his familiar technologies but uh, i'm interested in uh, whether the industry, the IoT industry as a whole, is kind of open to this uh, idea to adopting .NET, and is is there any does like .NET IoT have a significant market share? So that, for example, if I get interested in it, I can find projects in the industry that uh, you know, like commercial projects that uh, are actively developed, and uh, you know, maybe there's some like money in it. Yeah, so I'm just looking if you have examples. Idea question yeah uh, uh, as i know there are uh, several commercial projects to control uh, some temperature on your gas stations on oil stations etc on uh, some dubai etc so i know this it's really commercial projects and there are a lot of information in the networks about it uh, on another um, another things um, maybe no i know in healthcare as i said so it's a uh, lot of things because uh, the net provides it communications uh, you can share these informations but in general yeah maybe python it's more better for such uh, opportunities because it uh, not so depends and uh, better to collect uh, big data yes to using for neural networks etc but uh, i think uh, microsoft and the net community grows and <clears throat> maybe a few years ago you do you need to use some python for uh, machine learning or for your efficiencies uh, in uh, but uh, for nowadays you have some ml.net uh, libraries so it's gross and i think in the future yeah microsoft provides more and more uh, possibilities to develop uh, some applications using the pet for iot and in commercial uh, area also okay got it yeah we have to believe in microsoft because like five years ago nobody heard about blazor and now it's getting popular so you know yeah, they can expand yeah. into something new okay yes. thank you okay i think that's all yeah may, may sorry sorry may i share because no whole question may i share my private experience with iot Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, let me please, first of all, uh, you don't mention the Mono, Mono project, uh, also Mono work perfectly on Raspberry, uh, because uh, it supports .NET framework 4.6, yes, it's uh, like you're working with the .NET, for, uh, .NET framework, normal, classic desktop <coughs> framework, and it means, for example, that in your Raspberry Pi, you can use any Google services, Amazon services, you can connect to Mongo, to MSSQL server, etc. So it's absolutely transparent that, uh, that imagine that you develop some desktop, web or uh, service application, yes? So uh, it's worked perfectly. As for me, it's much better than uh, Windows IoT because uh, there is uh, for Mono much better uh, nougat packages yes second uh, you don't mentioned you mentioned particularly but it's windows 10 yes and you can install windows 10 on raspberry pi as a core 
and there is great opportunity you can create vpf uh, uh, uvp uvp desktop application and you can create from your raspberry pi uh, 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 sorry i forgot this word kiosk yes you can create kiosks what does it mean is that raspberry pi will start automatically with this application yes and it could be some i don't know industrial industrial uh, thing yes for uh, developing this but uh, from other perspectives uh, what i found that um, sorry guys but it's a uh, bullshitting working with dotnet on uh, these small boards because for example if we uh, back to dotnet nano framework uh, about 80 percent of memory and uh, cpu uh, dotnet nano framework will uh, take yes uh, because you need to run this cellar in the memory and uh, this is only for playing yes it's only if you want to create some uh, IoT device, device that not present in the market, yes, you can create this uh, only for yourself, yes, but uh, I have experience in one commercial uh, project. We created on Raspberry Pi with this mono, uh, with connecting with all the services, as I mentioned, and uh, it was about five years ago, but uh, you know, now I found that you mentioned about this MQTT and Zigbee. I found that last maybe two years, on the market, we have uh, thousands of different devices, IoT devices. I don't found any uh, any application for what uh, device will be not existed in the market. All these devices could be connected via Zigbee or Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and everything could be managed by smart cup or other open source devices. And all these devices could be joined to Google Home, uh, Amazon Alexa systems, uh, etc. Mm. Uh, Samsung smart things. And it looks like that there are no uh, need to use uh, to create your custom application. Just connect. Uh, you you need to buy a twenty dollars uh, Zigbee router. Connect to your Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi, yes, um, you can also uh, buy Raspberry Pi, install their smart hub application, connect all this together with Google Home Assistant, etc. It takes uh, maybe three uh, days, yes, to, to join all everything together, and you don't need to spend your time to developing application. It's like a hobby to create something that Yes, you can show uh, to the whole world that you can create this. Yes, you just do it. But uh, commercial sense there is absolutely zero. Sorry, guys, but uh, .NET framework and IoT is absolutely useless. Assembler, <laughs> C, C++, mm, yes, but... Python. Yes. Yeah, but... Uh, it's, my experience, uh, it's my private experience again. Sorry, guys, but it's my private experience. Yeah, yeah, I understand you. One, your opportunity. Uh, regarding Windows 10 IT, uh, why not uh, mention about because I think it's uh, 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 all new about this. It's uh, so you, you need to run your code using Windows 10. But I would like to describe how to you uh, to run your code without Windows 10. Yeah, it's also possible using Windows 10 and using uh, all uh, possibilities that are provided this operation system. And regarding Mono, as I know, it's uh, bought by Microsoft and it's, uh, it's evolved to Xamarin, yes? But- uh, Partially, partially, because we have a Mono core, Mono mm -hmm. framework and uh, Mono Xamarin, but it's more about the mobile applications. Uh, yeah. I mean, Android uh, and uh, Apple. Yes, but we have a separate Mono core uh, that you can install, you can run on any yep. operating yep. system yep. now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 